let's find the reaction forces on this beam. On this beam is a point load and also a uniformly distributed load. But the uniformly distributed load did not span across the entire beam. A uniformly distributed load is spanned across this beam. Likewise, on this beam is also a uniformly distributed load. The load value of A and B will be different. This span can have a uniformly distributed load of wall. And here we can have a point load from a column. Considering that the wall covered only one part of the beam. The uniformly distributed load from the wall is 8 kN per meters, while the point load from the column is 50 kN. The beam is pinned supported at point A and roller supported at point D. The uniformly distributed load from the wall starts from C and ends at D. To solve this problem, the first step is to draw the free body diagram, that is at point A. We're going to have one reaction vertical force and another horizontal force while the roller support will have only one vertical reaction force. Between point C and D, the total weight of the wall will be concentrated at the center. The concentrated load will be the 8 kN per meters multiplied by 3. 3 is the span of the wall. This new weight is 24 kN and this will be acting at the center of 3 meters which is 1.5 on both sides. When we redraw this, we are going to have a new diagram which is the free body diagram. And this is step number one. The uniformly distributed load that covered from C to D is now acting on a new point, which is on point E. And we're going to be calculating with 24 kN and not with 8 kN per meters. The unit of uniformly distributed load is in kN per meters, but the unit of a force is in kN. Now that we are done with the free body diagram, which is step number one. In step number two, forces going up is equal to forces coming down. Let's consider the forces pointing up. The reaction force at point A and the reaction force at point D are both pointing up. We are going to add up all the forces that are pointing up. Next, let's consider the forces that are pointing down. 50 kN force and 24 kN force are both pointing down. And we are going to add up all the forces that are pointing down. The summation of all the forces pointing up is equal to 74 kN. 
in step number two, we still have two unknown forces. Step number three, forces pointing to the right is equal to forces pointing to the left. From the free body diagram, the horizontal force at point A is pointing to the right. We are going to add this to the forces pointing to the right. Next, let's consider the forces pointing towards the left. From the free body diagram, no force is pointing towards the left. Hence, it does not exist. It is zero. To the left, we are going to have zero. We have obtained one of the results. Next, step number four. We are going to take moment about a point and the summation of moment about a point is zero. This point can be any point. Here, we are going to assume is point A. If this beam is forced to move in this direction, turning in the direction of the clock, then this beam is moving in the clockwise direction. Subsequently, if this beam is pushed to move in this direction, then it's going to be moving in the anticlockwise direction, which is opposite the clock ticking convention. Moment is defined as a force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. This distance is measured perpendicular to the point where we are taking the moment from. That is, the force and the distance will act at 90 degrees. We are going to apply the concept of moment in step number four and to keep the beam at equilibrium. The anticlockwise moment must be equal to the clockwise moment. We are going to take moment about point A. The summation of moment about a point is zero. Hence, the vertical and horizontal forces at point A will be equal to zero. And we are going to be left with 50 kN, 24 kN and the reaction force at point D. We are going to consider each at a time. Let's start with the reaction force at point D. And we are going to assume that the 24 kN and the 50 kN does not exist. In the absence of other forces, the reaction force at point D will cause this beam to turn in the anticlockwise direction about point A. And the moment is force multiplied by the perpendicular distance to the point where we are taking moment from. And this distance is 6 meters. Hence, we are going to have that this force multiplied by the distance. And this distance is perpendicular. We are going to add this moment to the anticlockwise moment. We are done with this force. Next, let's consider the 50 kN force. And we are going to assume that the 24 kN force and the reaction force at point D does not exist. The 50 kN force in the absence of other forces we turn this beam to move in the clockwise direction about point A. This is the direction of the force and the perpendicular distance to point A 
is 2 meters and the moment will become 50 multiplied by 2. The 2 meters is perpendicular and this moment is moving in the clockwise direction. We are going to add this to the clockwise moment. Next, we are going to consider the 24 kN force. And we are going to assume that the 50 kN and the reaction force at point D that they do not exist. In the absence of other forces, the 24 kN force will cause this beam to turn about point A in the clockwise direction. The 24 kN force is acting in this direction and the perpendicular distance to the point where we are taking moment from is a total of 4.5 meters when you sum the total length. The moment will be 24 kN multiplied by 4.5 meters in the clockwise direction. We are going to add this value to the clockwise moment. Next, in this equation, we are going to isolate the reaction force at point D. That is, we are going to make this the subject. This 6 will move across the equal sign to divide because it's multiplying. Next, we are going to pull up our calculator. We are going to click divide, open a bracket, 50 multiply by 2, close this bracket, plus open a bracket, 24 multiply 4.5 close the bracket, at the denominator, we are going to type 6, then click the equal sign. We are going to change it to decimal and our answer is going to be 34.67 kN to 2 decimal places. We have obtained a second result. From step number two, we are going to obtain the value of the reaction force at point A. When you substitute into step number two and solve correctly, you are going to have that the reaction force at point A is 39.33 kN to two decimal places. Having obtained all the forces for the reactions for the free body diagram. We are done. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. To locate other helpful videos, Follow the link on the screen. I will see you in the next video lesson.